New Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. Good morning, dear ones. I just love that boogie. Uh, that's a great opening video. I love that boogie boogie sound. So uh, thank you for being here with us this morning. It's 9 a.m. on the Mountain Time Zone. It's a Saturday morning, and that means it's time for our Science of Mind and Spirit Conversation series. So grateful that you are with us. I've got something special planned for you today. So uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, are so inclined, please feel free, uh, drop a question and uh, let us know where you are, where, how you're doing, what's happening around your life this day. As we get started, I want to say a big, huge thank you to our dear friend, Reverend Victoria Bomberry, who started this two-week series off last week. So we do this, uh, if, if you're new here, we've got a whole... Uh, series of speakers, and last week, Reverend Dr. Victoria, uh, Reverend Victoria spoke about Chapter 7 of the Science Mind, the summary of Part 1, The Nature of Being, and uh, for a couple of years now, I've kind of always slipped in the week after that and done uh, a, a, an exploration of the nature of our being as vision casters, so that's a big part of what we're going to talk about today dip brother wayne's with us light workers unite yes and i would say uh also uh vision casters unite that's part of what we're going to talk about here today linda dear one welcome glad you are with us happy 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 saturday jonna great grateful you are with us and shea bird Good, good, good morning to see you, dear one. Grateful you are here as well. And hey, we've got Dr. Tracy Brown with us. Uh, Dr. Tracy is one of the team here on Saturday mornings, and she's going to be with us next week to talk about uh, the power of thought. That's next week's chapter. So you'll get to see her next Saturday morning right here on this program as well so uh anyone else that's out there at any time feel free to chime along chat along ask questions as you go uh if you have comments or questions well just put them in the chat and uh we'll be sure to uh i'll do my best to interact and uh and uh, and such all right so here's where we're at um the nature of our being as vision captors. And so as I prepared for this talk, I opened up my book and, and we're using the science of mind textbook. And as I opened up my book, I opened up to page 129 and I've got notes from previous years and previous talks. And I start flipping through and I start looking at it. And I start thinking, you know, what do I want to talk about? What do I want to share? And, and what, what might be most beneficial for you to consider this idea that, yes, we are 
human beings, and yes, we are divine beings, and yes, I believe for every one of us, part of our role while we're here on planet Earth is to be a vision caster. To be able to cast the vision that we hold for our own lives, for, for those around us, we're going to talk about that, for the world as a whole, for all of humanity. And I start flipping through and I'm finding my stuff. And then, wow, something draws my attention back to page 128. The last page of the uh, previous chapter, which is called um, The Human Relationship. And here's what I find jumps out at me. We are bound by nothing except belief. There is but one mind. Here is the point. Everything we experience, touch, taste, handle, and smell, environment, bodies, conditions, money, happiness, friends, are all effects. It is clear that the infinite and limitless possibilities of that one of which human is a part, depend in our human expressions upon his own concept. Let me do that again. It is clear that the infinite and limit possibilities of that one, the divine, God, universal, of which we are a part, depend in our expression upon our own concepts. If one is a point of personality and limitless mind, which we are, and if all one's life must be drawn from this one mind, God mind, and if there is nothing else, there is nothing to move save mind, and if the one is a thinking center in the divine mind, universal mind, which we are, nothing is going to happen to us that is not happening through us. This is going to be really important. Nothing is happening to us. It is happening through us. To me, by me, through me, as me. Everything comes from intelligence. There is nothing. I'm um, sorry. Um, this is not in any sense fatalistic. For we may change the trend of causation which has been set in motion at any time that we decide to do that. This is so incredibly important. One of my first teachers used to say, no matter how far you've traveled down the wrong road, it's not too late to turn around and go back. We may change the trend of causation, which has been set in motion at any time we decide to do, to, decide to do so. So many of us have been telling ourselves stories for so long that just aren't true. So let's cast a different vision. This is the work. <clears throat> I'll say it straight out. It's the work of my life. It's the work I've been doing for 20 years. And it's the work I intend to keep doing for 20 or more year, more. So let's jump into the nature of being. 129. And everything I talk about today is going to be through this, this lens of casting the vision. In many ways, I've sort of, well started to replace the term universal or God with the term vision. Well, what's the vision have to say about that when asking a question or when contemplating a decision, I turn to the vision. In my prayer work, I, 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 I awaken and open myself to the vision, to the divine vision of the one, the universal presence. And we are each an avenue of expression through that one, through which that oneness is taking form on planet Earth. 
All right, let's get into the into the chapter. Page 129, first paragraph. Look at this. There is a universal presence that acts as though it, meaning the universal presence, there is a universal presence that acts as though it were intelligent. And we may assume that it is intelligent. One power, one presence, one intelligence. There is a universal intelligence acting as law. Now, we used to use that word in New Thought a lot. And I'm going to make it, um, <clears throat> seeing as Alice Holmes is using the word assume here today, I'm going to make an assumption that most of us understand watching this program if you've found yourself to this program, most of us understand um, the law. The law cannot be broken. The capital L law is the universal principle of creation, of all creation. There is a universal intelligence acting as law. So the one intelligence acting as law, one power, one presence, one intelligence. We may also assume this is to be true. So it, it <laughs> sometimes he's got words in here that, that uh, I forget on. <laughs> there is a formless stuff in the universe forever taking form and forever changing its form. This we may accept as being self-evident. Now, for anyone that's listened to me pray, you've heard me say there is one self-existent cause that is forever taking on form and abandoning that form in order to take on new form. That's a Holmes quote. Here's part of, of how he builds to a quote like that. And, and these little pieces are parts that really stick out for me when I read The Science of Mind. Because when I see something that I've seen before, when I hear something that I've heard in a different phrase or in a different book or in a different something, it, it really catches me. There is a formless stuff in the universe forever taking form and forever changing its form. And we can change that form. We can use that form. Let's jump down to the bottom of that page 129. The evolution of, of, of the human brings them to ar arbitrarily to a place where true individuality functions. From that day, a further evolution must be through their consciousness, their conscious cooperation with reality. Now, he's using reality as a word for God there. All nature waits on one's recognition of and cooperation with laws, and it's always ready to obey as well. But man must use nature's forces in accordance with the universal laws and in cooperation with the purpose, <clears throat> which is goodness, beauty, in which he attains self-mastery. Trying to make those gender switches as I go and not always effective on it. Over 20 years in this philosophy. And nothing has remained the same other than the vision. The law has remained consistent. God has never changed. I have changed, the people around me have changed, the organizations that I serve have changed, the organizations that I don't serve have changed. The internet has changed, the world has changed. Change is progress. When the change is moving us towards a greater sense of goodness, truth, and beauty. Assuming we want to attain self-mastery. That's on the human level. Just a little bit lower. The law has done all it can automatically do for us. It has evolved you to a point of individuality and must now leave you alone to discover the secrets of life for yourself. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Thanks. Read it again. The universal law, the law, has done all it can automatically do for you. 
It has evolved you to a point of individuality and must now leave you alone to discover the secrets of life for yourself. And we've been doing that. I know you. I know these people in this room. Most of you that I see your names or I see you giving me a thumbs up or I see you giving me a heart. I know you. I know you understand this. You have reached this point where you are discovering the secrets of life for yourself and therefore discovering the truth of who you are and what you have come here to do and be. You, you are potentially perfect but free will and choice cause you to appear imperfect. In reality, all you can destroy is some particular embodiment of yourself. The divine spark is always intact in potential, in your potential. You can always recreate yourself. Recreate who you are recreate what you believe now this is the point where many people will say well, that, that, that doesn't seem possible that could take forever i mean i believe what i believe we can always expand what we believe into a greater expression of what the law the law's potential we don't i this is, now we're going to get into some psychology type science. Most of us do not live up to our human potential, let alone live up to our divine potential. That's okay. Because that's what the human experience is about. Learning how to live into that potential. And here is the ultimate of the of our potential. Are the to me, the ultimate of our potential is a complete awakening, realization, and utilization of the law to create the conditions in our lives that we truly desire. There it is. We are here to learn how to best use the law to create the life we truly desire. A law that cannot say no, by the way. A law that cannot return our word void, a law that cannot take up our word, our prayer, and, and not create from it. What we cast into the law, the law must create with. It can't just say, oh, no, Robert, I don't like that idea. An intentional community? What are you talking about? No way. That's not possible. I might say that. Others might say that. But the law, I would never. The law doesn't have that capability. The law is this form. It takes this formless stuff and says, yes, here you go. Okay, we're going to jump over to the very bottom of page 132 and 133. So if you're following along in the book, there is but one mind in the universe and man uses it. Sorry. And hum and we use it. I should go by and I should just go start scratching those out, putting in some non-gender specific pronouns. All right. There is but one mind in the universe and we use it. You are an identity in the universe, a center of God consciousness. And that's why I love that I've always loved Holmes. I've come up as a Holmesian religious scientist. I am a, a, a new thought leader and teacher from the Holmes tradition. And in the early days of my education, we were still, the organization was still called, um, was not yet the Centers for Spiritual Living. It was still the Church of Religious Science. Then we became the Centers for Spiritual Living. And I've always looked at that phrase, that name, that term, as an individual aspect, not just the collective. It's not just the center for spiritual living here and here and here. It is the center that is 
here and right there, right in the center of who you are. A center of God consciousness. At first, we are ignorant of this and misuse the power. And, and how I would say it is we misuse the power of the law, consequently bringing upon ourselves misfortune and negation. Think about it. When you were younger, at some point in life, you learned how to drive a vehicle, a car. And if you're of my age or or, or better, you probably most likely learned how to drive a car with a manual transmission, with a stick shift. When you learn how to drive a car with a stick shift, you're going to make more mistakes than when you learn how to drive a car with an automatic transmission. My kids are learning how to drive. They get in, turn the key, push push the pedal, and away we go. And don't have and don't have that extra piece of oh, it's starting to not go as fast, or oh, what's happening? And we we have a way of absorbing all that comes into us. And processing it so that it works for us. And we sometimes forget that. Or we get distracted by something else. Or we start to believe something else. Like, I can't do this. I don't know how to drive a stick. I can't do this. Trying to start a stick on a hill. I can't do this. And we allow ourselves to doubt ourselves. But the truth is, that is the misuse of the law. That is how we misuse the law, through the very little subtle thoughts of limitation and lack that we place within our own, in our own minds. So we have to be able, in that moment, to also say, no, that's not the truth. People have been learning how to drive stick their entire lives. People know how to do this. Somewhat, if it's in the divine mind that knows how, the divine knows how to do this, so I can call this into my mind. This is, for me, there's a scene in the Matrix movie that I just always loved because the characters are back at their base and, and um, the female characters, I'm forgetting names, excuse me, the female character needs to learn how to fly a, a, a helicopter, so she radios back to the base, and the guy at the base plugs a program into her mind to allow her to fly that helicopter. We just have to learn how to plug into our own minds a different program. Just saying, no, that's not the truth. The truth is, I know how to do this. The truth is, the divine knows how to do this. And I can pull that wisdom, that knowledge into myself right now. And make it so. If you're with me, give me a shout out in the chat box. If you've got questions, feel free to ask them anytime. Welcome to leave a comment. Or ask a question at any time. Okay. So, uh, second paragraph, page 133, middle of the paragraph. Our conscious thought acting through law. So now this is not the unconscious thought. This is not the stuff that happens in the in-between. And this is not the stuff that, that in our dreams, our conscious Thought, that which we are placing our mind upon, acting through the law, may change any condition in our experience, provided we can clearly conceive of such conditions being changed. And I and I have had so many people say, okay, Robert, I'm with you, but I don't know what I want. I don't, I don't know what I want to change to.
when we don't, when we believe we don't know, when we don't know, it's only because we believe we don't know. Or we believe we don't have the tools, an avenue of tapping into that infinite knowledge, that infinite wisdom. And that is what the visioning process is all about. The life visioning process is all about tapping in to that, in, that wisdom beyond and suspending my own disbeliefs about myself or about what's possible. I mean, the only thing that'll keep a great idea from becoming a form, true, real, is when we abandon it. When we give up. When I say, I can't have that. How many people spend countless amount of times praying for more money in their lives? Wishing for more money in their lives. Bemoaning that there isn't enough money in their lives. And that is both a positive use of the law and a negative and, and, a, and a limiting use of the law. When what we have to do is change our consciousness about our own ability to receive and use that money for good. For some, it happens quickly. For some, we have, to, we have to keep casting the vision. Every day, every day, casting that vision. Now, it doesn't mean that we're each and every one of us is being called to jump up on a soapbox in the middle of town square. Or maybe it's a milk crate at the mall. I don't know. Now, it doesn't mean every one of us is called to be to stand up and and preach or shout or or promote or, or talk about a vision for something. Every one of us, however, has that within us that knows what we're here to accomplish, what we're here to do. And as we discover that through the visioning process, through other spiritual practices, then we have within us the the the, the reminder that allows us to speak about this or allows us to take action towards that vision. Vision casting, from my definition, from my perspective, from my practice, is not always about standing on the street corner and telling people about your great idea. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of opportunity to do that, and that is necessary, and a great idea needs hands needs hearts, needs people to fulfill itself. And what I know is I know that as, as we each hold true to our own vision, our vision of who we came here to be, the vision that, that, that we believe is ours to fulfill. Let me talk about that in a minute. then that must, by the laws of the universe, by this universal law, it must come into some form. When we consciously cast a vision. A little farther down, one, two, three, fourth paragraph in the middle. This law works automatically until it is consciously changed. So if you put a belief into the into the universe that says, I'm not worthy, I don't know how to manage money, I'm never going to have money, and you just become okay with that and allow yourself to, to, to glorify your ability to operate, to, to create, to, to serve without money, you're going to... That's the experience you're going to have. It, it's not going to kill you. You're not going to just topple over. It's going to make your journey more difficult in some ways. It's going to make your mission a little more difficult in some ways. And a long time ago, I was in a conference. And, uh, and there's a dear friend and a female speaker. And she asked the audience a, a pretty straightforward question. She said, uh, you know, she had, she had been privy to some studies that say 
generally, this is less so in New Thought, but overall, men in the world want to make a lot of money. Women in the world want to save the world. Now, we operate within an organization that talks about creating a world that works for all. So I know that the men of the, of the New Thought world uh, are less less inclined to to fall into that uh, those categories. But, however, if it is true for the rest of the world, the question she would ask is, how much money does it take to save the world? Now, we also live in a conversation where we understand that the world really doesn't need saving, that there's nothing broken, there's nothing wrong here, there's nothing amiss. So is it not ours for those with the eyes to see to say, hey, wait a minute, that's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. We are by our very nature abundant beings. The world by its very nature is an abundant universe. The world is part of an abundant universe going far beyond what we can even imagine. No one can, we are, scientifically, we cannot see to the ends of time. Scientifically, we cannot see all that has been created in this universe. Even with great microscopes, we're still discovering newer things. Even with bigger spaceships looking farther and farther into the distance, we continue to find creation that we couldn't possibly count. We are a part of an abundant universe, and there is no reason that any one of us can should not. I said that word. There's no reason that any of us would be denied an abundance of anything we desire. The law works automatically until it is consciously changed. Our job is to change those old beliefs so the law works constantly in our favor. So we know that, that the law is always working on our behalf, that the entire universe is collaborating on our behalf, your behalf. Anchor that in. To learn how to think is to learn how to live. For our thoughts go into a medium, that formless stuff, for our thoughts go into a medium that is infinite in its, God's, in its ability to be and to do. Near the end of the movie, The Secret, I was first introduced to a phrase that I now know was not original. <laughs> That's okay. There's one mind, and that one mind reveals itself through countless minds across time, space, and human knowledge. And in that movie, at that, at that phrase, what was said was, the desire would be that every human being at the moment of birth comes onto this planet knowing and reminded that you can do, be, and have anything you desire. We forget that sometimes. That gets pushed away sometimes. That gets erased sometimes. But I'm calling you back to that remembrance right now. You, as a divine expression of the universal law and love, can do, be, and have anything you set your mind to. To learn how to think is to learn how to live. For our thoughts go into a medium that in its in it that is infinite in its ability to be and to do. We are using a power which is infinite as compared to using a power that is finite, which is my human thoughts and ideas and beliefs. I have to transcend my human limitations of thought to allow for a greater thought, the thought of the divine to find me. 
and I direct that. And again, here we are at visioning. In the visioning process, we are opening to a greater conversation between our humanness and our divinity. Not some force outside of us, but a force that we are actually a part of. And we are having that conversation, bringing, bringing the disbeliefs and allowing them to be transformed, bringing my limitations and allowing God, the divine, the universal to tell me that's not the truth. That's not how it works, Robert. Let go of that. Let go of all that and become this. The vision tells us to embrace what to embrace, what to release and let go of. It tells us what we are becoming. It shares with us the grand, glorious vision for who we have come here to be and what we can accomplish if we simply say yes. It gives us everything. The bottom of page 133. All conditions which appear to be opposites are not really a result of the operation of opposing powers, but are the way the one power is used. So that politicians, those politicians we maybe don't like, they're using the one power. They're just using that power ineffectively maliciously sometimes we can counteract those experiences by utilizing the power for good by making every day an experience and an experiment of good an experience of how much good i can bring to to the world to my life to my work and an experiment about how i can do bring even more good how I can be in that consciousness of plenty, how I can be in that consciousness of knowing that your life and my life are intricately, so intrinsically connected that we are all one. Deeply we are one. Y'all knew I was going there sooner or later, right? Deeply we are one. One power, one presence, one infinite intelligence. Operating is all of life. On 134, there's one little sentence there. Well, one good sentence. We already have within ourselves the key to freedom. But we must come to realize our real relation to the whole. This relationship is one of complete unity. And so we give ourselves to the whole. We give ourselves to, the, to a deeper expression of wholeness. And I get there through the visioning process. Now, I understand that I, and I, I'm totally with you. There are those that get there with prayer. There are those that get there with meditation. There are those that get to this place of knowing, this place of consciousness in the labyrinth. We're just walking on a path. And for my life, nothing compares to the wisdom and the insight, the inspiration, the, the information, the knowledge that comes to me through what I call it, the deeply mystical process of visioning. In my prayer work, you'll hear me speak of spiritual mind treatment as an affirmation of truth and often a revelation of truth. Because when we go deep enough into our spiritual practice, 
whether it's prayer, it's experiences envisioning all the time. When I go deep enough, I let go of the me. I let go of that human consciousness that by its in very that is limited by my experiences of life and allow the divine vision to reveal itself to me if i do nothing with that nothing changes even if the the even if the surroundings the environment around me were to change nothing really changes in here in here but when i allow myself to be guided by the vision then my life becomes the outpicturing of that vision and i'm not trying to be a vision caster i just am The what and the who I am becomes a, a vision cast into the universe, cast into the world, cast into whatever project I, I'm, I'm a part of in that moment. And you are this as well. You are the outpicturing of God's glorious vision for your life. Who, who you are and who you came here to be. That is, from my experience, the nature of our being. I want to thank you for being with me today. I want to thank you for hanging on because this is a little different than some of what we normally do here on Saturday mornings. And it is the perfect outpicturing of what we do here on Saturday mornings. We say it all the time in this movement that Dr. Ernest Holmes never wanted to be a church. That all of this information has been hodgepodge together over time and things have been changed to to meet the 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 ideals of the day perhaps i believe we are here to take this wisdom and live it and so we're not here to try to memorize chapter and verse we're not here to try to live according to some idea, some mandates from way, way back. We're here to plumb this reservoir of knowledge, this, this resource of infinite wisdom, because I believe there is infinite wisdom within this book. There's some humanness too. There's some stuff in there that'll never make it into a talk that I give. That'll never make it into a teaching that I share. But I don't throw away the whole book. There is good in the universe. And you are using it. And it is using you. And the deep dream. The deep wisdom within it. Within you. Is necessary. There's Dr. Tracy. Exactly. Live it, embody it, be it. Not just read it. We are a philosophy in the book, a faith in our hearts, and a way of being in our lives. So the only real relevant question becomes, how are you living this? And how's your living? Are you living it? How's your living are you living this? How are you living this? I know you're living this. You wouldn't be here if you won't, weren't. And what we strive to do here at New Thought Media Network is give people like Dr. Tracy and others an avenue through which to, ex 
to share their living expression, their living experience of this powerful, powerful wonders, this powerful philosophy, the science of mind. All right. Spirits, uh, I'm hearing that voice in the back of my head that says, it's time to stop. Shut up. All right. Enough. You got it. They got it. They're good. Let's go live it. Let's go make it a great Saturday. Unless it's already Sunday where you are. Let's make it a fabulous day to prove to the universe and ourselves and everyone around us that this stuff really works. You just got to work it. You just got to work it. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing here on New Thought Media Network. We have a we are have a growing, growing community of organizations and individuals that make all of this happen. And I want to say thank you to them. Please don't go away. Uh, I'm here for I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, so if you have any questions about what we've shared today, please drop them into the chat box. Now we're going to say thank you to our donors and our sponsors. And I'll come right back uh, and we'll do some question and answer time. Uh, so uh, stay with us. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Please help us say thank you to our organizational sponsors, including the Hefferlin Foundation, Affiliated New Thought Network, International New Thought Alliance, Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown, New Thought Philadelphia, Planned Happiness Institute, Summit Center for Spiritual Living, One Heart Retreats, Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, Unity Kitchener, Unity Spiritual Center, Ottawa, Ohm Center for Spiritual Living, Satya Center, Begin Within Ministries, Center for Spiritual Living, North Jersey, Unity of Savannah, and the Center for Spiritual Living, Seattle, as well as all of our individual donors. Thank you for being part of the New Thought Media Network. Please like, share, and subscribe. New Thought Media Network, positively inspiring. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of the New Thought Media Network, helping us to share this message uh, out across the planet into all areas of planet Earth and beyond. If you'd like to become a part of our global family, please check out uh, our website, ntmedia.org. Click on the donate button uh, to make a donation. Make it a monthly donation. We'll include your name on the next version of our thank you video. Uh, and you can also join our new community platform. There's a link over there that says community. Uh, you scroll down a little bit and hit that next link that says community. It'll take you to the sign up page and we'll get you signed up for our new social media platform specifically uh, for this community. So we'd love to have you join us over there. All right. Be excellent to each other. Absolutely. Thank you, Naomi. Glad you're with us. Appreciate you being here today. Shay Bird. Love and life. Glad you were with us as well. Everybody else, Tracy, always good to see you. Remember, folks, Tracy will be with us next week. Um, and uh, she's going to be here next Saturday morning. Uh, I, I already announced it and then I forgot it as well. Uh, <laughs> it's right here. It's about thought. We're going to talk about thought. The power of thought. That's it. Tracy's going to talk about chapter eight, the power of thought next week. So join us uh, for that. Shea Bird says, uh, sometimes I doubt the vision itself. Is this common? And how do I know it's a true vis divine vision? Uh, great question, Shay. Um, yes, I understand this conundrum. And here's what I say, what I look for. I look for the things that never go away. I look for the things that are always showing up. I look for the things uh, that keep showing up again and again and again over time. So uh, uh, let's uh, let's take the, the divine vision of an intentional community. It just doesn't go away. It just keeps showing up. 
It may not be the perfect moment for that to happen. And that's our human experience uh, in the divine mind that it, it has already happened. It is already happening and, uh, and we're catching up to it. So uh, to know it's a true divine vision, it's going to happen over time. And oftentimes things that don't show up again and again, things that are a flash in the pan, they show up in one session of visioning uh, and not the next and not the next. Those are the things we don't need to worry about. And so visioning becomes part of our, uh, our lifestyle. It becomes something we do consistently so that we can discern oh that thing keeps showing up and that thing is a what what was that well, i'm gonna watch for it but if it doesn't show up again then it's nothing we need to concern ourselves with great question good 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 all right folks i'm gonna get out of here unless there are any other questions anything somebody wants to bring up i'm gonna get out of here let you get into your saturday again let's make it a great weekend Let's have, let's have a fabulous time demonstrating that we are capable and we are creating the lives we truly desire. That in itself helps create a world that works for everyone. We'll be back again uh, later today and this evening uh, with evening prayers and such. Uh, and do remember on Sundays, we have a full day of programming on Sundays. Uh, it starts early at 8.30 with Rev. Melissa and the Sunday Sip, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, all live programming from around uh, North America with various communities. And then throughout the afternoon, beginning at 2 p.m. Mountain Time, we have uh, just the talk. Several different centers uh, uh, share with us just their Sunday talk, and we rebroadcast those. Leads up to a Sunday evening with Rev Jim and uh, the Prosperity Programming. So uh, I'm out of here for now. Thanks again for being with us. Until next time, I'm not turning off my, there we go. <laughs> Till next time, I want to wish you peace and richest blessings. Bye now.